Hey guys, Garage 79R. We're underneath the R's today. Uh, did some changes. You know, I've been on, I wouldn't say on this kick, but the discovery that, you know, you can get a lot of feel and just better performance with different bump stops. So, the Yaris has never rode great. Ever since I put the Tokiko Blues on it, it's never rode fantastic. It's always been kind of firm. Um, and I originally had Micro Image slash Tiger Tech Springs in the very beginning. Actually, I had the springs on the stock struts before they blew out at about a hundred or at about thirty-five thousand miles. So when I put the uh, drop springs on, it tells you to cut the bump stops in half. Well, I didn't because I wanted the extra protection. Um. I now realize I probably was riding on the bump stops the whole time with the drop springs because the other week I decided to check to see where my car is engaging the bump stops. I forgot they were massive. Now, I already trimmed it, so we'll get to that in a minute. But they were, actually, you know what? They were almost four inches tall. So... Of course, that piece went on the bottom. It went like th that. I had checked the car at ride height on the stock. So I put stock springs back in maybe two years ago. So on the still on the Tokiko Blues. And it still rode the same. Still rode like garbage. And I think part of that is just the valving. So the other day I, I got you know an idea. I'm like, well, wh how soon am I engaging my bump stops and I couldn't remember how large they were I don't think I physically I learned when I changed the struts but I think I might have left a bump stop sitting in the boot in the dust boot I don't I I don't remember them being that massive but I also wasn't taking notes I didn't know any better back then so anyway like a week and a half ago I check and sure enough with stock springs at right height I had maybe an inch before I was engaging the uh, bump stop and I was like, all right, that explains why pretty much in every bump, it just feels firm for what it is. So I went ahead and trimmed the lower piece off just to see if it gets me anywhere. And I noticed it was just a little bit better. It just seemed like I had a little more give until it started firming up. So went ahead, hopped on field suspension, ordered the same front bump stops that I have on my Fortune Auto Coilovers in Earl. I got the same exact ones on the 40 yards. And today, because I am tired of this thing sitting high, I put my drop springs back on. And I know that puts my control arms in a, in a worse spot. I'm now in camber loss, not camber gain. Because right now I'm looking at my control arms. And they are slightly up. Don't mind up. Uh, and I seize all of them. So... That's not the way to have your control arms. But this is not my ultimate competition vehicle. So I'd rather have a little style and, you know, drop it down. You know, make it look tight. If you didn't know any better, you think that's stock height. That looks like stock European stuff. I don't know why they made these sit so tall or have so much gap. So, a little mishap today. Caught the corner of my door. On my UZ when I was backing it up so I can tighten everything. And I, I pulled the door in just not in time and I clipped it. Whatever, it's a 10-year-old car. So, new, you know, well, not new. Nothing's new other than the bump stops. Everything's old stuff. It's kind of hard to see. The micro image springs. Um, I did not check. Right now I'm trying to get home. So, I did not check. How much I got left. Now, the only thing I don't like, ignore the sauce dripping off of it. My white line sway bar is now kind of close to my custom muffler. So, I might have to do some hammer bashing or cut it. Or I'm going to be putting my other track pipe on anyway. My, uh, my loud one. So, But yeah, the micro image springs, I mean, they got... 130 something thousand miles on them so they're not pretty we get salt here in maryland so but 
They were one of the highest rated springs back in the heyday. And I, there's not that many manufacturers now, but they still had like the highest spring rates. And that's the main reason why I chose them. Um, so they're 4K front, 3K rear. And they're supposed to be an inch and three quarter drop, but in the sedan, it's more like two inches. So we're gonna go for a ride in a little bit and see how this thing drives. All right, so we're driving the Yaris, and immediately it feels better. It, it feels great. I just did a little bit of, uh, of a slalom, and uh, can't go too crazy because my subwoofer ain't bolted down, but it feels awesome. It feels like I have way more grip, and really, <sighs> a vague way of saying you got grip is you also got travel. So... I think we're on to something here. So we're going to drive kind of out of the way from the direction I'm coming to that road I like to test my bump on, um, my mid-corner bump. I want to see if it's got composure. Am I going to bottom out hard? I did check when, before I put the new springs in, I did measure and check the bump stop versus strut bottoming out. And it looks to be a little over an inch um, before the strut bottoms out. Uh, like the bump stop engages a little over an inch before the strut uh, bottoms out. And I'm not sure that's going to be enough. I might have to put a spacer. Oh, this, oh, this feels so much better. Um, I might have to put a little bit of space in there just to give a little extra insurance so I don't physically bottom out the strut. Um, but I miss these springs. They do ride great. And I, it's so much better now because I'm not just feeling every little nuance because I was pretty much on the bump stops before. So, it just... The car rolls a little bit more because I had more travel. What also started or kind of sort of kicked us off when I was thinking about how to improve my Yaris, I was thinking back to when I raced it on the drop springs and when I raced it with the stock springs. And in corners, you know, sometimes we'll have a trackside photographer take pictures. And the car rolls over essentially the same amount. And it was only a little bit on the outside. Most of the car's roll was inside lift. Um, and that's why I was like, well, maybe I'm engaging my bump stops. Like, maybe they're way too tall. Now, factory cars. Most factory cars are, try are set up to... On the limit, the car naturally wants to push a little bit, wants to understeer, because in the event that you go off the road, you're safer in a head-on type collision than going backwards off the road and whatever. So, it's just most of the time when a car is cornering a factory car, generally the front bump stops are engaging sooner, and they're actually usually much harder. Um, they're not super progressive. So the ones I put in from Feel, they, they're progressive. Uh, oh, you know what? We're gonna take a goofy way. I got that little res or Helmholtz resonator in the back. It has an actual kind of a ring out the back. And I I don't necessarily think it's appealing, but I find it amusing and I like it. But I'm sure people are going, what is that? So anyway, Feel has on their website, they, pro they, they have a chart where they measure the spring rate of the bump stops, basically, uh, over the course of compression. And I'll post it up now. But it's something like, you know, a couple hundred pounds or whatever. And then, like, once you get into, like, maybe an inch, it starts fucking ramping up. Uh, because, well, that's what you kind of want a progressive bump stop to do. Is give you that little bit of progression if you get into it. And then ramp up to go, hey, we got to limit and stop this travel before we have suspension damage. So, I might have to space them down a little bit to 
engage them a little sooner, I got to see how this responds. Okay, so now we're on the road to like the test on and already I mean, it just I feel it feels better the car feels better um, yeah it's still firm it's still on Tokiko's they're still gonna have firm valving and I got higher spring rates but already on the little you know broken up the asphalt and whatnot it just I oh, like right there that little hop I didn't have that before um, it, you know it's actually got suspension stroke now even though I've actually lowered the car I've gained some stroke or free I should say I've gained some free stroke uh, I'm not engaging in the bump stop yet so we're going a little fast we're going about 55 but we're not there yet I'll slow down about 45 like in the last video and then what I'll try to do is also we'll switch back and forth between this video and the on the last one how I move, how the car moves. Hopefully I don't slam the strut, and I don't think I will, but this will give me a good indication. Okay, I'm coming up to the bump. I'm going from 46, drive it down, 43, 44. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! I'm happy with that. That was much nicer. I mean, you know you went over a bump. But that was much nicer. Ah, I love it when shit works. I still gotta get into, like... I gotta... I, I don't wanna say... Oh, let's go find a pothole, but I gotta find a hard bump to see what the suspension does. You know, maximum impact. Um, but I think we're there. I might have to put a minor spacer in, but we'll see. You know, once I find a hard bump and see if I'm actually bottoming out the strut or not. Okay, I turned around. We're going to go back over it in the other direction. Um, I usually hit it going that way. So this is going to be different. I don't do this enough to go to know how the car should respond. This is more so I could just get home faster. Because I'm hungry and I haven't eaten yet. And it's 3.30 in the afternoon. Alright, what are we doing? 46. Just so far, I'm, I'm very happy with this upgrade. I get my visual. I get my looks. And... I also get a little bit of performance. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. So other than maybe if I find a big impact and I might need to get that bump stop engaging sooner to prevent strut damage, I'm pretty happy with what we got. I mean, yeah, now I, the car just... Oh! I love that. I just love the way this feels now. Bump stops. That's all I needed different bump stops oh I swore off Tokiko Blues because they I just couldn't stand to ride but I might have to find me a friend of mine had a set I might have to go buy them these are old they still ride fine but if that's all it's been this whole freaking time is just I was just needed to do different bump stops first of all it's kind of sad but you know you only learn stuff as you get older. Yeah. I'm so I'm you know, I wouldn't say I'm a suspension expert in any, in any means, but I have a pretty good grasp of how to set one up. And especially with my Tercells, I'm really good at making them drive well. The RS has always kind of been like, well, it's the daily driver, so I don't mess around with it too much. And well now. Granted, the Highlander was just in an accident the other day. And that will be a whole other video. Um, not my fault. The guy just cut me off and I plowed into him. Um, but now that I'm driving the Yaris, I'm going to be driving the Yaris pretty much every day for the next couple of weeks minimum, probably a month or so, while the insurance companies 
do their bullshit and whatever. Um, I wanted the Yaris. I wanted to make an improvement on the Yaris. Now, I'm still, I got a race, I got an event, track cross, the first winter one is in a couple weeks. Um, so that was the main reason for this upgrade. I did hit a bump and it did smack the muffler on, on the sway bar. So on the street, I'm fine. If I'm hitting it, it's not it's not like a constant thing. So I might, when I go to change it, when I go to put my track pipe on, I might mark it and flatten it a little bit, just give it a little extra clearance. But it shouldn't need much. Um, it reminds me I go order a new clamp for my track pipe. So I'm happy. If you're chasing suspension woes, check your bump stops. I almost want to get into the Highlanders bump stops, but I'm not going to. Not right now, at least. Gotta get fixed first. So, so I've been working on the Malibu too. Some progress there. Not much for like a video, but um started diving into the wiring ended up pulling the motor trans back out so i could get because on the one uz's they they encapsulate the wiring and plastic sleeving and whatnot behind the motor which is fine but when you're trying to get to it while it's in a car when it's an exceptionally tight situation i just pulled the motor out it was easier do it on the floor um and the process of chasing wires and whatnot and eliminating systems I've also found some broken wires. Yeah, pretty much every connector is also breaking every time I touch it because they're just 30-year-old connectors and or 25-year-old connectors. Uh, but I also found some split vacuum lines. Like it amazes me how well it ran in the donor car with all these issues. So what I had planned for the Malibu has kind of got flipped around a little bit. So, but I'm making some progress. And that's better than it just sitting and me looking at it. So, see you guys on the next one.